Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be covering the geometrical interpretation of determinants in a bit more detail. So we will be doing geometry with determinants. So we already mentioned a bit of this when we talked about the, uh, the idea of a parallelogram back in the first video of determinants, in which we mentioned that the area of a parallelogram is spanned by two vectors, which is the value of the determinant. So let's go and talk about a few more details in regarding geometry. So let's draw a triangle first. So it's possible to compute the idea of a triangle using cross product definitions. So let's go ahead and talk about how this works. So let's define two vectors here. Let's call this U and let's call this V. Okay. So Let's call this let's call this vertex P vertex R actually, and let's call this one vertex Q actually. So it turns out that the area of the triangle in this case is one half times the magnitude of U cross V, and the reason for that is because the magnitude of U cross V in general gives you a parallelogram. So it's actually going to be this entire thing. So one half of that will give you a triangle, which should be kind of intuitive. And the reason this gives you a parallelogram in the first place is because if you go back to the idea of a determinant, if you take a two by two determinant, you get a parallelogram. So the cross product works a bit similarly because a cross product is technically a determinant spanned by in two directions. So that would give you a parallelogram if you kind of win both directions of the i and, I and j coordinates. So when you take half of that, you'll get a triangle. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of, well, a tri of a triangle. Now let's talk about something called a parallel epipede. So let's be, let me just draw a 3D axis here actually. So here's one direction, not the band. Here is a, another direction. And let's draw another kind of direction, like so. Okay, let's draw the vector, the actual shape using a different color. So here's one kind of direction. Okay, so here's one. Let's draw this shape right there. And let's kind of just connect these two lines together. Okay, and let's join the other ones. Okay, that's one. And uh, let's join the other ones as well while we're at it. So that's another one. And let's just keep going. So, Here's going to be another vector right there. Uh, let's join this part as well. And let's kind of erase this to make it line up properly. All right, and let's join this final part right there. Uh, okay, that seems to be Good. Okay, now this shape right there is known as a parallelepiped. So just to be very clear, that's the z-axis, that is the y-axis, and that is the x-axis. So, and of course, this is the origin. So we just gotta bubble that in. So that's the origin. So if you take, if you kind of write this as the angle, so this is angle theta. Although the angle theta isn't strictly necessary, but let's go ahead and do this anyway. Now let's use some other color to describe the vectors. Let's call this vector v. Let's call this vector w, and let's call this vector u. Okay, so now if you go ahead and kind of join or join these together, so let me just kind of do one last thing. And there we go. Okay, so this right there is known as a parallel pipe. It. So this three-dimensional figure. It's just a 3D analog of a parallelogram. So we kind of extend the idea of a parallelogram from areas into volumes. 
So it turns out that the volume of a parallel pipette is given by the magnitude of u dotted with v cross w. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on here. Okay, now here's the other thing. This thing right there, so this kind of quantity right there, is known as a scalar triple product. You strictly don't need to know this, but I thought it would be a good idea to mention it anyway. So this is known as a scalar triple product. Sometimes known as a triple product, but some people use it called different things. It doesn't really matter. They all kind of mean the same thing. Okay, now what's going on here is that, well, if this is a vector u, what I'm doing is I'm calculating the area of a parallelogram, which is the v cross w part. And then you dotted with that vector. Well, if I if I tied, if I dot the two vectors together, well, that's going to give me the height of this thing, which by definition is a volume. So that's where the area of a parallel pipette comes from. So let me go ahead and actually write that down. So this is the volume of the parallel pipette, so P A R A L L E E L E P I P E D. So that's a pretty long word. So it's the volume of the parallel pipette spanned by the vectors U V and W. So this is what's kind of going on here. So the volume of the parallel pipette spanned by those three vectors is what describes this particular volume. Okay, so that's a particularly interesting situation. So let's go ahead and do a very quick example, and we'll only, and we'll only be doing a single example of this thing in order to compute the area of a triangle. We'll so we'll only be doing one example, and we might do another example if you have time. But I think we may, so we'll see. So let's do the first example. Okay, so find the area of the triangle with vertices P is equal to, okay, let me just kind of clean that up a little bit. So P minus 1, 2, 0. Q, 2, 1, and minus 1. And R is equal to minus 2, 3, and 0. Okay, so... That's actually not too bad, so we should probably sketch this in some way. Uh, it's not really possible to sketch a 3D thing in a flat 2D space, so I'll, I'll just kind of approximate this thing. So let's call this point P. Let's call this point R, and let's call this point Q. So this is point P, this is point R, and this is point Q. Okay, so let's say that this is our minus 1, 2, and 0. Let's call this our minus 2, 3, and 0. And let's call this our 2, 1, and negative 1. Okay, we have to compute P, Q, and P, R. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see. So P, Q is equal to Q minus P. So that's going to be equal to 2, 1, and negative 1 minus minus 1, 2, and 0. Okay, if you compute this thing, you'll get 1. Sorry, not one. You'll get three, uh, negative one, and negative one. And then if you compute PR, we'll get, we're going to get R minus P, and that's equal to negative one, one, and zero using similar logic. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to take the cross product of these direction vectors. So PR and PQ. If we take the cross product of those vectors, take half of it, we'll get what we need. So let's go ahead and do a direct calculation. So the area of this triangle is going to be equal to one half times the magnitude of PQ 
cross PR. Okay, now let's take the cross product of this thing. So this is going to be equal to one half times the determinant. Uh, we can actually just write like this of PQ and PQR, PR, sorry. So let's just kind of write this down anyway. Yeah, so it's going to be the determinant of I, J, K of, let's see, we actually don't need to determine because cross product is technically determined by definition. So we don't technically need that part. So I, J, K. So it's going to be, let's see, 3, negative 1, and negative 1. And then we're going to get minus 1, 1, and 0. Okay, if you go ahead and compute this thing, you'll get 1 half times the magnitude of 1, 1, and 2. And we already know how to take the magnitude of this vector. So if you go and take the magnitude of this thing, you'll get 1 half times the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. But then this is equal to root 6 over 2. And that will be the volume, or not the volume, the area of this triangle spanned by those particular vectors. Okay, now let's do another example, I guess, which will involve the parallel pipe uh, definition. So let A be equal to 3, negative 1, and 5. B equals 5, 4, and 9. And let's C be equal to minus 3, 5, and minus 3. Okay, so find the volume of the parallel pipe. So find the volume of the parallelepiped okay span by those two vectors so span or span sure uh, the actual question is to describe but it doesn't really matter so span by a b and c Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how to do that. So the volume of the parallel pipe, so B, is equal to the magnitude of A dot B cross C. No, I'm not going to put vectors for the sake of time. Okay, now this isn't too bad to compute, so we need to come, we have to figure out what B cross C is. So if we compute B cross C, well that's going to be equal to I, J, K, B is 5, Four, 9 and then c is minus 3 5 minus 3 if you compute this which i'll leave the details to you you'll get minus 57 minus 12 and 37 okay and then if you compute a dot this vector you'll get the following so you'll get that the volume is equal to the magnitude of a which is 3 negative 1 and 5 dotted with minus 57 minus 12 and 37. Okay, and if you compute this out, you'll get the square root or the magnitude of 26, but then that's just equal to the square root of 26 squared, which is just 26, so that's just 26. So the volume a bit of this parallel pipette spanned by those vectors is, well, just 26. And that's actually it for this video and examples. There really wasn't too much to talk about, but if you want me to do more examples regarding the geometrical meaning, let me know, and I can do that. But otherwise, if you have any questions about any of the examples or the concepts, let me know, and I can uh, I can always help out uh, help out with that. But otherwise, if this really helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll really appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and have a great day.